In this video, I'm going to walk through the process that I use to convert this infrared photo to a black and white photo using Adobe Lightroom and Silver FX Pro. Now, this photo, this infrared photo, was shot with a 590 nanometer filter, uh, which is really good for creating uh, false color images with blue skies and colorful foliage, but it can also be used to convert an image to black and white as well. So let's walk through that process. So first of all, we'll get started in uh, Lightroom. And as typical with uh, working with infrared, the first thing that we want to do is to... Um, uh, pick the, uh, the color profile that we're going to use. So uh, we'll open up the color profile picker and I'm going to head down to the <coughs> color matching black and white section. So we've got these across uh, profiles, uh, sort of a standard across, across green, which really cuts some of the contrast out of the sky. Uh, the across red, uh, which gives us a lot more uh, punch in the sky. The yellow, which is a mid middle, middle point, really and then some similar uh, monochrome effects as well. For this particular edit, I'm going to select the uh, the yellow, the across yellow. Okay. So, a um, couple minor things that I want to do here in Lightroom. Uh, really don't want to spend too much time in Lightroom before we jump over to Silver Effects Pro. The first thing I want to do is just get rid of all the sharpening. We don't want to deal with that at this point. And the noise reduction, we can address that later if need be. And then the other thing that I want to do is uh, set up a crop. Uh, so really to uh, level the horizon. So just a bit of a tweak here to the horizon to get this level. Bit of an eyeball here. We've got a little bit of distortion in this image. Okay, that's good. All right, so now we're ready to head over to Silver FX Pro. So I'll right click on the image. Uh, select Edit In, Silver Effects Pro, and we will load that up. So that'll take just a second here while we load that program up. Okay, now in Silver Effects Pro, we've got the image loaded. Now, the main thing that you want to do when working in Silver Effects Pro is to pick out an initial preset. You don't have to. You could just work with global adjustments, but the presets are really great for um, giving you a, a feel uh, for how the image is going to look. So uh, you can select all presets or you can group them um, in a variety of ways and kind of cycle through and see all the different potential looks that you're going to get. You can see there's quite a wide variety that you can do. Uh, from really stark black and whites to s more subtle, and then additional effects as well. <clears throat> so I've got a favorites tab with, with a number of favorites that I have selected, um, and I'm just going to kind of click through this list and see um, what, what I like. What I'm looking for in this image is I want to see the detail uh, that comes out in in the, the, the foliage and the moss on the trees. Um, and I want that to really sort of dominate the look of this and not so much some of the other elements. So uh, this seems like a really good starting point. So I'm going to come over to, to my global adjustments and look at some of these settings. Um, structure is a really powerful tool that you can play with uh, for kind of creating that micro contrast. So I'll add a little bit of that. Okay, so that's pretty good. One of the challenges that I find in Silver FX Pro is that this preview doesn't quite give you the resolution that you're going to see once you uh, once the image is rendered finally. So uh, things can change pretty dramatically once you've actually rendered an image. So you kind of have to take it a little bit on faith. Now the other uh, decision that, that I have to make when I'm working with Silver FX Pro is is sort of the uh, where when I want to do my dodging and burning I can I can choose to do that here or I can choose to do that in Lightroom so if I do it here then that's going to be done with a series of control points and these control points are really interesting so if I pick a control point I want to deal with this this hot spot that exists down here by the houses and kind of tone that down I can create a spot and then it'll put in this circle and I can adjust the size 
of the circle. And what's really nice about this is that not only can I um, adjust, you know, the brightness, but I can look at the contrast and structure. So I have I have all three of those tools available to me, and that's pretty cool. Uh, the The thing that that I don't like as much is the fact that I'm limited to a circle, um, whereas I can get more control uh, over how this is going to look um, if I can manipulate the shape more, which you can do by manipulating the, the size, the type of the circle in, in Lightroom or uh, using a brush tool instead. So there's a whole variety of options. So I'm, you know, as you can kind of see the, the challenge I'm already facing here is that as I try to diminish this hotspot, um, it's starting to pull in no matter what size I get to, it really begins to pull in the uh, the surrounding area due to the feather uh, that's kind of naturally there that I don't have a lot of control over. So in some cases, I really like these control points in Silver FX Pro, but in some cases, they just don't give me the, uh, the sort of granularity that I'm looking for. Let's try another one over in this space. So we'll do the same thing, try to diminish the, the, the hot spot that exists over here. And in this case, I can get it, I could bring the brightness down just a little bit without having too much of an impact on uh, the trees nearby. So in that case, it worked really well. I really liked that. Um, and let me do one more over on the edge of the screen. Here, this one is going to be trickier because this is one where I would prefer more of an oblong uh, shape. Um, but I can kind of get the worst of it here. Okay, so that's an example of what you can can do with the control points. Again, uh, these you can do this this type of dodging and burning here in Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, each program is going to give you a variety of type of controls. So I'll probably follow up and do a little bit more in um, in Lightroom. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this image now. Uh, so now uh, Silver FX Pro will render its output. And then uh, save that, and we'll open that back up right into Lightroom automatically. Okay, great. So here is um, the image. And if we do a, a comparison, um, so the image on the left is what I just generated out of Silver FX Pro. And the image on the right is the, the image in Lightroom just before we went into Silver FX Pro. And you can already see the kind of um, micro contrast and detail that um, Silver FX Pro is able to bring out, which really, really gives this type of image a lot of pop. Okay, so let's um, uh, finish off now and do some more edits in Lightroom, and we can really polish this image up. So the first thing I want to do is tackle some of those um, those hotspots that I talked about. Uh, so we'll use the, um, the radio filter. And let's just go right in here. And as you can see already, I'm adjusting the size and the, the complexity of these. I want to invert this because I only want to affect this image, the uh, space within the circle. And just drop it a little bit. Usually when I'm dodging and burning, I try to work in third stop increments. this here, invert it, um, negative 0.33. Sometimes they need a little bit more. Or um, another option that you could do is to go after the highlights directly. That can help in an, in an image like in a, in a hot spot like this to bring it down a bit, some combination. I don't want to get too much more in the exposure because it, it starts to affect the other things in here that, that don't look so bad. So let me try the whites. Nope, that's too much. Okay, so that um, kind of knocks that back a little bit to make that a little bit more manageable. Now I'm kind of seeing the same, that the, the upper right-hand portion of the image is really pronounced and bright as well. So I think I'm going to put another... 
uh, radial filter up here, a rather large one. And in this case, I, I, I want the effect to be much more subtle. Uh, so maybe we'll just look at like, say, uh, a quarter stop or a sixth of a stop, somewhere in there. Just trying to not have the 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 draw um, of the image be in this upper right hand corner. So you can see that's that has a much more balanced look to me throughout the image, and my eye is not immediately drawn to the upper right. We'll do another one down here. This is kind of a hot spot that I want to address. Invert and bring down a bit. One of the challenges in with this particular shot is the uh, this was a 16 millimeter uh, lens on an APS-C camera. There was actually it's a lot of there's a lot of distortion around the corners, um, and so sometimes if you get a hot spot plus some blurring from the distortion, it doesn't look so good. Okay, so now I've got the those major hot spots taken care of, and I might uh, take the just in order to draw the focus of this image in. I might do a little hot spot in the center. So we'll invert again. And in this case, I'm going to go to a positive exposure. Just a hint. I like it when you can create a little bit of a, of a, of a dodge in this case that is just a hair brighter than the rest of the image. It's almost unnoticeable um, if you're not aware of it. But it can really, in this case, it really draws your, your eyes down to the, down the, uh, this lane um, down towards the center. Okay, so um, that looks good. I think we've got uh, all of those issues addressed. So now I can go back and kind of just do some global adjustments, um, see if I want to adjust the the overall exposure, get it a little bit more balanced with the here. S um, I'm going to look at uh, maybe bringing up some of the shadows as well. I don't want to do it too much. I lose some of that contrast, but I like uh, some of the texture and the bark bringing that out a bit. Um, and then I can counter that by uh, taking the blacks down a little bit so we uh, still re retain some of that punch. So it's a bit of a balancing act between the, um, the shadows and the blacks. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of texture to again emphasize the bark and some of the details here. Now, clarity clarity is pretty interesting in an image like this because you really have two ways that you can go. You can increase the clarity, which seeks to, you know, really emphasize and punch up um, some of the sharpness, the micro contrast. But we've kind of already done that with some of the other settings that we've done, and we've already done that in in Silver Effects Pro. The other thing that you can do with clarity is you could reduce the clarity a small amount. And that could start to create a little bit of a glow, sort of the, the wood effect named after the photographer who uh, first became famous shooting infrared photos. So that, that glow that you get in foliage, you can get this effect in Photoshop um, uh, using layers. But if you use a little bit of negative clarity in Lightroom, you can start to get a, get a hint of that as well. So we'll do a little bit of negative clarity in this case and um, add a, help add a little bit of glow to the image. Finally, I'm going to look at the tone curve. We'll see if we can punch up the, the contrast just a little, a little bit more back to where we were. And I will uh, I'll take the... I want to look at the black levels and see, make sure we don't have too much deep. So yeah, we can, the blue on the image signifies the blacks that are clipping. And I don't mind a little bit of black clipping, but I, I want to make, I want to see what it is and make sure it's not too bad. Okay. All right, so there we go. So here is our uh, final image. So if we hit the slash key in Lightroom, we can see what that looked like uh, before uh, we started making these changes. But again, that only gets us back to um, uh, what we had before uh, coming out of Silver FX Pro. And then here's the, the enhancements that we've made since then. So that looks even better. So um, that is a, an example of how to process a 590 nanometer infrared photo. Uh, using Lightroom and Silver Effects Pro. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.